you're watching After All's Rock and Roll Halloween special. You know, I was a rock journalist, and the toughest part of that job was trying to make musicians sound interesting, human even. To find one that was not only verbally dexterous, but famous, funny, and apparently normal to boot would bring you this much closer to God. Well, here's one now, one of the very, very few. From yes to Clive Dunn, there's always been Rick Wakeman. <laughs> I saw you just before the show started. You weren't wearing that. No, I wasn't. And to serve you right, I don't think I'm even going to say why are you wearing that. Rick, oh. go on. What, what is the story of that? Well, this is a little number I picked up in Russia before Perestroika set in. Mm. Uh, you can get stuff out there now. It's quite, it's quite But that particular time, it was very, very difficult. And I was there with my son. We were doing a television show, and you're locked in a hotel, and there's all armed guards and things outside. But there's all these, the black market. Everything was black market yeah. then. So we went out and we bought, uh, you know, the, like the little like Khrushchev dolls and things you can get to bring home. That's, that's all right on the black market. And then this guy sort of spotted who I was and he said, and also, all to point out, you're only allowed to take in a certain, whatever money you take in, that's you've right. got to, on the form, you've got to fill out, you're going to go back, I had about $126. You're not allowed to bring anything out, are you? No, that's right. And, mm. and whatever you take out in, take in in English or American money, you've got to take out again. So I had about $126, but I had arranged for $50 to pick up in, in uh, Moscow, in order, uh, sorry, Leningrad, in order to buy a few little goodies. So I could go out with the same money and a few goodies. <laughs> now, I was out there, I've got this little gun in the back street. I love that, yeah. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm out in the back street, and this guy came, he said, Mr. Wakeman, he said, what? he said, you want to buy KGB uniform and trench coat? <laughs> my, my son goes, no, no. I said, yeah, come on, he says, come on. So I go around the corner, and in the back of this beat-up old car, he takes it, and he's got the full, the full one, plus his trench coat, it's in that. I said, and it was winter, it was cold, my son had a big car, I said, "Crap, how much? He said, $15 for the lot. $15? $15, so I give him $15, I said, Adam, stuck it up, so he sticks it up in his coat, now, Adam, my son, he's ever so thin, so he's now like 26 stone. <laughs> <laughs> So he said, I said, where'd you get it? He said, my, he said, my brother. He said, my brother, he, he was in, in the army, special KGB. I said, brilliant, great. So I'm walking away, he says, Mr. Wakeman. I said, what? He said, want to buy Admiral's uniform? <laughs> yeah. I said, what, did he defect? He said, no, <laughs> he said, another brother. I said, great. So he holds up this Admiral's uniform. He said, unbelievable. I said, great, how much? He said, 15. I said, great. So I'm stuffing it up. <laughs> so we go back to the hotel, right, and I'm ramming it all in the case, and this is brilliant. So two days later, we're at Leningrad Airport, like, waiting to go out and they won't give me an exit visa. So I'm wandering around the airport with this case, in all sorts of trouble trying to get out, and my Aeroflot ticket, Aeroflot tickets are useless. If you actually miss the flight, I mean, you can't even swap them for an Airfix kit. It's hopeless, <laughs> really. It's a nightmare. So I'm sitting there, so I go to British Airways, and a little tiny little office part of Finnair, and it cost me $4,500 on the old credit card, and I get tickets to get the band, everybody yeah. out. So I got the promoter there as well, and I'm saying, this is a nightmare. I said, it just cost me $4,500 to get out, so I've got no chance of seeing my money. He said, he said, Look, I try and get you your money, I try and get... So anyway, he vanishes. So this guy who's wandering around with the, with the beard a whole bit, he's been clocking us. We've been there for like hours and hours and hours. And he suddenly comes and says, Mr. Vacan, come with me. So I go with him into this office, and we sit down. And he <laughs> says, why are you still here? You had a flight this morning. I said, well, couldn't get the exit visas, but, you know, a bit of a problem. I said, I've just had to buy some tickets. So he said, all right, let's see. He said, you still not got the visa? I said, no. He said, I have one of your albums. And you see that little glimmer of hope. Mm. And I said, really? <laughs> well, I said, we'd like some more, you know. So, so, <laughs> he said, yes, please. I said, I've got it. I said, you know. So we got a little address together. I thought, this is going real good. And he said, oh, I'll get you your exit fees. No problem. He said, you have nothing to take out that you should not have taken out. because the right amount of money. I said, oh, yeah. Came in with $126. Going out with $126. He said, great. He said, you have no rubles to take out. I said, well, got, got a few for, like, gifts and things, you mm. know, because you're not meant to take them out. He said, uh, how many have you got? I said, well, not, not very many. He said, what are they? I said, uh, in, in my shoe. He said, stand up. So I've got like one leg six inches shorter than the other, you know. Yeah, yeah. He said, ah, oh, is it in the right foot? I said, yeah, this body. <laughs> he, said, um, <laughs> he said, well, that won't be too much of a try. He said, uh, anything else? I've got some of the little dolls, you know. He said, oh, it's fun. I said, I've got KGB uniform. He said, bloody got what? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I have. He said, that must be stolen. You can't have I said, well, oh, I have. He said, where is it? I said, it's in, in the suitcase. I, I could go over the Queen's head and have a pint, couldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> so he said, he said, it's in the suitcase. I said, he said, I, he said but it was a hard. He said, because there's about eight x-ray machines, all your stuff goes through. Mm. I mean, so, the x-ray machines are so powerful. If you've got a loaded camera in there, your films come out and they're all developed. Yeah, you know, I know, you yeah. Get your pictures, <laughs> yeah. So he said, well, he said, no, hold on. He said, if I come with you, he says, the case, he said, the good thing about the uniform, he said, it's not got any sort of shiny things or, or you know, he said, because it's all braiding and it won't show up. I said, good. I said, he go. He said, what? 
I said, there's a hell of a lot of medals on the Admiral's jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. And 11 hours later, yeah. I arrived at Heathrow and I had some other little goodies because we'd been somewhere else in the way. So I pulled in the cast and I was a good boy, like I always am, to declare. And I yeah, sh right. showed all the things. No, I always declare. I showed all the things to declare. He said, anything else? I said, uh, oh, I've got a Russian Admiral's suit and a KGB uniform. He said, it's off. Oh, yeah, just. <laughs> yeah. But see, I, the, first time, the first time I met you, you told us another visa story. This time about, was it Argentina? Or you had to get, you couldn't get a. a one South American. Oh, one. yeah, I bought a, first... a dodgy visa for, for Brazil. Yeah, because Joan Bars had arrived the day before and mouthed off about the Brazilian regime. And so they decided not to give anybody visas anymore. So the promoter down there says, No problem. He said, You'll go. He said, It's not the problem. You go to Paraguay. So get one there. Paraguay. Paraguay. I've just gone back from Paraguay yesterday. That was another hilarious story. I to... <laughs> Sadly, David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust is waiting in the wings. Right, yeah, be, but anyway, no, go on. So... I'll be as brief as I can. Anyway, I, I landed. They sent me off to Paraguay. I had to go and see the Brazilian, or part of the Brazilian consulate, or well, I thought it was anyway, but it was above this little shop in Ascension. And uh, I went up there, and there's this little window that's shut where I'm taking all these guys. And I've got this envelope, which I've got to give $500 over, mm. you know, to buy this, like, iffy visa. So I bang on the old thing, that, this woman, and she said, I said, yeah. And I said, I've come to get a visa organiser waiting there for Brazil. And she said, uh, Herr Schmidt, honestly, the guy's name was Schmidt. She said, Herr Schmidt. Herr Schmidt in yeah. Paraguay, it was. come on. Oh, they all are. They all, yeah? are. they all are there. Oh, yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? He's like white Mercedes and... I'm afraid so. Is it? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, no poodles. It's all Alsatians, boy. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you go, you go. So I go up there to Herr Schmidt, and she says, Herr Schmidt gone fishing. I said, I've got a plane. I've got a show in Brazilia tomorrow night. She said, no, Herr Schmidt gone fishing. And I said, oh, I've got to give you this envelope. And she went... Herr Schmidt, come back. <laughs> <laughs> so I had the passport, the thing shut, so in comes this, this passport back, and I'd, I've still got it at home, I wish I'd brought anything, I didn't know you were going to ask me. And I got this visa, and normally they're all stamped with various sort, sort of like uh, stamps and things on it. This is drawn in crayon. <laughs> I mean, it didn't even look like, I went, oh, uh, so it's too late now, so I get back to Brazilia. <laughs> I arrive at the airport. This is absolutely. So I arrive at the airport. And I'm thinking I'm going to get arrested because they all know I'm coming to do a show. So I arrive there, and the guy, the guy at past me, he says, "And and what are you doing here?" He said, "You're doing a concert." I said, "Yeah." He said, "Did you get a visa a few weeks ago before the?" Before Another the German in Brazil. Oh, sorry. Yeah. But, <laughs> there are a few down there, and also yeah. he said, uh, "I said uh, uh, no, I've just got my visa." He said, "Where?" I said, Paraguay. I don't do that, and he went, <laughs> He called all his mates over. <laughs> oh, he said, thank you, off you go. <laughs> you see, it's well, already apparent since you've been on, like, ten minutes now, and those stories, you've always been the best raconteur in rock music, which is not much of a, a same, because most of them are monosyllabic. But when you were in Yes, it was this majestic, deep, uh, macrobiotic band that they were with these, these lyrics about... Um, you know, who knew what, about Sanskrit books of the dead and stuff. Yeah. And I used to see your eyes closed in that big glitter cape, doing the Mellotron and everything else. Yeah. But was, does that mean your heart and mind were not entirely in the concept of topographic oceans and stuff? No, I must admit, Toby's graphic go-kart, as I used to love him, it. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, I used to close my eyes a lot because most people eat after a show. I used to have violent curries before him. <laughs> I mean, uh, you had them during, I remember. Is that I did, that, that's true. But I, uh, that, was, that was when I had the famous boycott curry. You What's know the, that? Uh, well, it's like a vindaloo curry, except the runs come slower. Oh! <laughs> oh.